Good morning, Point Hope. Good morning. Good morning. I am Reverend Lisa Hawkins, although Sandy wants to <laughs> elevate me. And like I said, I hope she's not prophesying because I do not want to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> unless you call me, but <laughs> um, I am so happy to be here today and I um, bring you holy greetings from Charleston Wesley Foundation. Um, we have groups now at the College of Charleston, the Citadel, Medical University, and Charleston Southern, and Pride and Tech students are beginning to filter in to some of those, um, to some of our events. We would not exist without the prayerful people known as United Methodists but especially the churches of Charleston District, because you help with your prayers, you help with donations of food, you help with opening your arms and um, inviting us in when we do our mission weekend and you had that feast that the students are still talking about that. And I really believe that some of them would have been here today if there was another feast. <laughs> But it's also Valentine's Day, and you know, Mama Lisa, I have to be with my girlfriend, so. Um, but they're here in spirit and they, um, we do love you and um, acknowledge that we could not exist without you. Those um, young people who sang this morning were just wonderful, were they not? Let's give them another. <laughs> One of the many things that I do is I help with the um, conference youth choir and they tour the state. I'm going to different churches. There are young men and women from all over the state. Um, they audition for their different parts, and then we get together in the summer for a camp. Um, the camp is about 10 days long. They come in on a Tuesday. That Friday, they give their first concert right there at Spartanburg Methodist College without the music, music that they had just gotten four days before. And they do it every year, to, to my amazement. But um, they are wonderful, wonderful um, young people. And as I was listening to this children's choir, I'm like, ooh, Kathy Jo Long wants all of y'all in a few years. <laughs> you know, once you get rising um, ninth graders, she's gonna be knocking at your door. Um, and they are just wonderful young people who spread the gospel through song, just like these wonderful little cherubs did this morning. Um, and I love to see uh, young children's choir, because we know that it's going to go on. Y'all not going to have to sing forever over there, but, you know, God has a way of just bringing up through the ranks. Um, and it, it was really heartwarming to see that. And I, I'm going to tell Kathy Joan, give her the, the number to this church. <laughs> But truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 9, verse 27. A taste of the kingdom of God. A taste of the kingdom <clears throat> of God. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, you have given me these words to share. Now fill me so that I might deliver them in the manner in which you want them delivered. Lord, let Lisa decrease so that you may increase. Amen. In our text today, Jesus is going up to the mountain to pray. Jesus is going up to the mountain to commune with God, to refresh his resolve, to fulfill his divine purpose. Listen to the account of what Jesus had just revealed to his followers just eight days before our text opened. And it's Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 27. When Je once, when Jesus was praying alone, with only the disciples near him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, 
that one of the ancient prophets had arisen. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Messiah of God. He sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief <clears throat> priests, and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Then he said to them all, if any want to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their crosses daily and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will save it. What does it profit them if they gain the whole world, but lose or forfeit themselves? Those who are ashamed of me and of my word, of them the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God. And just before that text, Jesus had fed the 5,000. Jesus is now drained. He is totally bent. He knows that he is moving closer, ever closer, to his suffering and to his death. So where does the chosen Son of God go when he needs strength? Strength of mind and of body. Where does he go but to his holy divine parents, almighty God? 